Welcome to Giving Tuesday for the Decor North Nest. The North Nesters, hello, and others. Um, welcome to our Giving Tuesday chat. Um, so if you're watching this live or if you're watching this after the fact, uh, um, thanks so much for being Eagle uh, fans, the Eagle ambassadors, uh, um, watching the Decor Eagles. Um, this, uh, especially this nest, has become uh, more special just because uh, um, mom and DM too are taking a break, right? Well, and the North <laughs> Nest is so beautiful too. I, I mean, yeah, there's just so much to different. love about the whole they're, area. They're different, so so we really have uh, come to enjoy as even from the beginning, just all the differences of the North Nest. But uh, uh, welcome here, and I guess uh, you know we're here. On Giving Tuesday to talk about uh, uh, fundraising and support of Raptor Resource Project and the programs that we do. Um, a huge part of our program that we just talked about is our Peregrine Falcon Monitoring Program, um, which is uh, uh, the oldest and the most uh, historic and, and uh, part, part of our mission and project that we do that was started by Bob Anderson. Um, you know, the, the assistance and and amazing work in bringing the peregrine falcon back to the historic diaries of the mississippi yeah. River valley so um that's a huge part of our mission um and then um the surprise and 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 the great years and and just the the growth of using bald eagles as an education tool yes and an enjoyment tool you know with the core eagles uh, starting off of american eagle with Bob and Neil, and then going viral and and really kind of changing the face of uh, nature cams in yep. 2011. And, 100%. Uh, a model for uh, using them as education. So, um, And our moderators and teachers and a lot of you fans out there have been with us that whole time. So, And for all the new folks, uh, um, thanks for all your support over the years. So I guess... Uh, um, Right off, I'm just going to talk over this, but I'm going to quick just show our calendar. Um, we are working on the 2022 calendars uh, for the Decor North Eagles too, but we'll have them for Great Spirit Bluff Falcons, the Flyway, the Decor Eagles, and the Decor North Eagles. So we do have calendars. It's a great way that we do fundraising. So you're seeing the cover there of the Decor North Eagle calendar. Um, I'm just going to take that down. Robin also has a calendar that uh, uh, a portion of the proceeds are coming to Raptor Resource Project. So I know she's already put her calendar out there, which is beautiful, showing the decor eagles. So anyway. Um, and just real quick, it's fun to see all you guys on chat. I can see you at chatting while we're doing this. So uh, hello to everybody who's saying hi, and thank you for letting us know you can hear us. We really yeah, appreciate that. Right. And if you've got questions, uh, just queue them up here and the mods can let us know. We'll have some time here um, at the end for a Q&A. So I know you guys have lots of questions, uh, so we'd like to answer those if we can. Maybe so. start with a recap of the year? Yeah, yeah. So um, recap of the year, I guess uh, um, probably I, watching and working over some footage. I, I think one of the things I want to say is, a huge part of the Decor Eagle education program is showing uh, the intimate details and lives of bald eagles. And that started out with American Eagle, with Neil Reddick and Bob Anderson with, with that nature movie. Um, I was working a lot last year taking um, highlights from our videos and the year before for um, what just came out this year, which was the, started out with the BBC, uh, Super Powered Eagles, and that the uh, American version of that on PBS Nova was Eagle Power. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Seeing the eagles um, and and doing that, you know, this equipment that allows us to collect 4K footage now, which is what is is wanted and needed for these movies. Um, a part of what we use funds for here is is collecting top quality footage that can be used in educational movies. Um, and, and doing that. So um, long story short, 
it's a great way of supporting us, helping us getting that education message out and letting people learn about eagles over the, the de- last decade. Right. Um, more than the last decade, over a decade, and continuing on here. Um, so first uh, big part of the year that I remember at the North Nest was the two snor- snowstorms. Yes. Um, I can't remember exactly what year it was. I think it was 2018 because that was the year that we lost Dad to Cora. It was the year that we had the offset double clutch, and we had a huge yes. snow snowstorm of over a foot of snow in the nest, the nest that did not collapse, the original nest, and it was just incredibly amazing to see how an eagle can incubate eggs through it, a foot of snow. Oh, absolutely. And do it successfully. And that first happened that year in 2018. We got some amazing footage. And then last year, uh, the year before that, we had, uh, uh, or this last year, we had the footage of the two snowstorms where it was really duplicated. And with our cameras, we were able to catch some of that footage in in, in, in HD 4K. So That was unbelievable. uh, So I was amazed, just uh, not just one snowstorm event like that, but two where Mr. North and DNF, persevered they showed us you know how well of a connection that brood patch has you know with those eggs and the good insulation you know usually they're just trying to keep up with the snowstorms by putting that that fluffy grass material and softer more insulative material in that inner nest cup and then a snowstorm will come and then they'll bring more in right and um, it's amazing with that tiramisu of snow and ink incubate nesting materials that help incubation um you know how that works yeah absolutely they've shown us you know year after year even the decor eagles that it does work it can do trust it trust the eagles <laughs> trust the eagles but sometimes it's hard it's hard yeah even for us sometimes we we have our our, our doubts but uh usually they come through so um that's the big part that i remember um it was Really neat to watch a successful hatching with the two eggs. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just uh, what a season with the N13 and 14. And, and um, I just, I love watching them hover, you know, when they when they were getting ready to fledge. We had some wind events, some pretty windy days there where I think, uh, I can't remember which eaglet it was was over off of the main yeah kind nest of over and, on the porch and we were we were getting some gusts coming and uh, the uh the pre-flights uh looked like they could have gone to the wrong, the wrong way <laughs> well and then the the first flight yeah. i guess the second one too but it was so classic after all our worries it's like what's gonna happen are they gonna get blown off the nest and then there's just this kind of confident yeah. fly yeah. away from the nest it yeah. was great it was a, a a very enjoyable season to watch and did you ever wonder if DN14 was actually going to fledge? Because I know I was yeah. like by day 81, it's like, what's going on here? Come on. Right, right. And we pretty much guessed what what uh, sex it, DN14 was. By, yeah, I mean, by obviously we can't longer do a and, formal, but right. yeah, at 83 days and with sort of everything that went on. Right. So, um, and I think, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is just because it's been so much of a issue in the last couple of years is, a big part that I really enjoyed was not seeing a black fly. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> not seeing the black flies um, and uh, um, just the, the everyday beauty of watching a bald eagle bring in a fresh uh, trout and feeding it to its young and or just, uh, you know, getting getting uh, um, some reserves put in before the, the cold months here yeah. before and then even after the fledge, uh, we got to see so much uh, good connection between the young and, and Mr. North and DNF. It was it was great to watch. Yeah, it, was, it was a great was really eagle fun. watching season. Um, and we did not get to see as much of uh, uh, our eagles at the fish hatchery. So um, it was it, it was a really lot of fun to watch need to to get to see more of uh, the north nesters so i like the north nest neighbors too and that to me like the way the camera operators are always able to find maybe the eagles aren't in sight but we can look at cardinals or goldfinches or 
of sparrows or right. other eagles or cows. I, you know, that to me is like a, yeah. a really fun thing yeah. to watch. There's a food source there and, you know, we learned some stuff. I'm not going to tell all the details, but there is a relationship between eagles and um, uh, mothering cattle. And uh, the eagles have a tendency to kind of watch that. And uh, they're watching for food. And you guys know what the cow get <laughs> That what they like to eat. It doesn't run away. It's really easy to catch. <laughs> yeah. So when the cattle are done with their process, uh, there's always a gift left over uh, for the eagles and, and their young, if, if the young are of, of uh, eating age and not gone. And that's usually the way it is. Um, the the white-tailed deer, the, the possums, you know, carrying... A bundle of leaves behind in their tail. That was fascinating. Um, the, uh, the did I mention the coyotes, uh, the raccoons? Uh, um, we do see, uh, and, and obviously the squirrels who have caused troubles for us at this nest by chewing on equipment in the past. But I think that uh, with our cages put around the microphones, yep, and the uh, camera mounts that uh, we've uh, beat oh, beat the squirrels for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should talk a little bit about the challenges of working. Because yeah, again, like yeah. we're not going to talk about where this site is, but I can tell you it's not a mile away from a hard hardware store in, e in either direction on Lake right. Decora, and it's a right. really interesting place to try to work. Right. So um, each year we spend a significant effort in both equipment costs and, and uh, uh, materials costs, and then also just time and materials for us to get out there and do this. We take the whole month. Of September just to do field work at the Eagle Nest. Um, and then there's a whole month of pretty intense work just ordering all the materials and getting things ready for that. Uh, um, so uh, when you think about you know, what you're donating to uh, when you donate to the Raptor Resource Project, uh, a big chunk of that goes towards our Eagle education and enjoyment uh, streams and programs. Uh, um, and so uh, well, when we talk about the climbing and camera placements, and all three of us do that, but you got to see John and Mad Scientist both <laughs> flailing away in a shed trying to get everything ready. Because that's the other thing. Like when you think about the cameras, they don't just come ready for the tree, right? No, there's no. so much work. We've learned a lot over the years how to waterproof connections. Um, I have to say that uh, again, it's a knock on wood uh, um, saying here uh, while I'm saying this, but the audio systems that we have. We don't get the delays like we used to where the, the audio was not in sync with the, the video um, and um, they're very reliable. Um, the audio quality is, is amazing. We hear labor pains and chirping of female eagles. We can hear it when they slice. Yeah. What is it when they slice, Amy? <laughs> Does everyone know the term slice? It's not golfing. <laughs> Better than golfing. <laughs> no, that's true though. Yeah, you can't hear it. It sounds something like that um, when they when they launch their poop shoot. Um, and there's a difference in the sound when they're only two days old, two three days old. It's yeah versus the the, the larger and healthier <laughs> splat, not healthier. We can tell that splats. we can tell that <laughs> with eagle. the quality of the microphone. So um, we've learned over the years, and what Amy says uh, um, is. It's a challenge. It's also very enjoyable to, to get good equipment up and, and we've learned over the years how to do it and, and get good reliable equipment. And we've got backups. We typically at most of the nests, uh, the cameras are pulled back. You know, we still are quite careful about any new Eagle nests uh, or any others where um, we don't have as much exposure of Eagles. And it's just a, it's just a precautionary thing. We usually don't even pan the cameras and sometimes you don't even turn them on until the eagles are already committed to the nest and have laid eggs. So um, if there is any chance of, of any effects of that, we camo them. We've been watching for over 10 years now. So we really, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to tell, you know, what, what eagles are concerned about um, the placement, you know, far enough away from the nest, the camouflage, the, uh, um, those are just two of the big things. And, and just we found out over the years that um, it really, they don't look at them as, as, a, as, a, as a threat. Right, right. It's not a predator. Um, noises like sounds that might sound like an owl going clap, 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 you know, any clicking noise, you know, that's like an owl 
Um, those are the kind of things that they pay attention to. So, um, so the equipment and the time to put things up, it does. And remember, um, 2018, this nest came down. This is one of our ongoing eagle experiments. Yes, this is an ongoing um, eagle experiment. So, um, we both Amy and, and with engineering support from from me and and Amy and Kike up in the nest yep. uh, uh, deploying and doing an es excellent job of that. Um, we had DNF come snatch the first uh, trout out of the nest that we put there in the fall of 2018. Um, so she's been through 2019, 2020, 21, three seasons. Yeah. Now. So we're going into our fourth season. Yeah. Um, with a, uh, our not so new female, the Core North female, DNF, and Mr. North. Um, so uh, we talk about deploying the cameras, we talk about maintaining the nest, rebuilding the nest. Rebuilding the nest. Um, one thing that I have to mention is just the, the, uh, the great partners that we work, the landowners with the, the landowners and, and they're donating in a lot of ways. They're donating, um, working with us and they're donating, you know, uh, I guess, uh, sharing their property, sharing the wildlife and, and yep. the, just the, the mystery of the Eagle life cycle and, and the nature that's there. So, uh, thanks so much to them and their donation of, of that, uh, to the landowners, um, at all of our sites. That's a big deal. Um, Agreed. So, so what was a favorite like North moment of yours or North like anything that really stands out for you? So, um, the the snowstorms and that double repeating of almost a foot of snow. I think it was about nine inches the first time. It was bad. And it was close to eight or ten. The incubation and just um, that first when those eggs started pipping. And when they actually hatched, and I realized that we had two successful young eaglets, yes. that was probably <laughs> um, that 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 was just the the awe of nature and the awe of the hardiness of these these bald eagles. It's just crazy how well built they are for this harsh these harsh winter uh, climate uh, regimes up, up here in Minnesota and Iowa and everything else. Uh, it's in Wisconsin, you know, in our Midwest area here. So yeah. How about you? I, I kind of, you know, like, like, same as you, like, what do you pick out for one thing? But I think my favorite thing was getting to watch DN13 and DN14, two eaglets finally fledged together. It was so much fun to see DN13 go and then wonder, right. like, what's going to happen with right. DN14? And then we got to watch them as they wired yeah. their explorations, yeah. as they caught things, as yeah. they perched out, as they chased their parents. I just thought, like, seeing them learn about life beyond the nest yeah. was a blast. Yeah. It, it. What we get to see after they fledge, especially at the North Nest over by the creek. Yeah. And they're fishing and watching the parents train the young. And um, that is something that really just reminds me of what a great idea it was to put that, that pasture cam in. You know, oh, yeah. And to be completely. able to see that, you know, and placing those. So we've, we've, we've got that, that window into the post-fledge and what's going on. Yeah, um, and that's something we really can't see, even with the you know the right. nice hatchery cam. Even before right. we couldn't see that decor because right. the area is so much more uh, urbanized. Maybe is not quite the right word, but it's certainly yeah. not as uh, rural and wild as the North right. Nest. Right. So, uh, um, you know, there's some some interesting, you know, I guess concerning things too. Um, we're our 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 eagles. We know like eagles like osprey. As a food yeah. source, they are they're, they're, uh, predators. Uh, eagles will predate on young osprey. They'll predate on young red-tailed red hawks. hawks. Yep. And that specifically was the case at the nest this year. Um, we we got to see that, even though it's something that you don't necessarily want to watch. Nobody enjoyed that. <laughs> no. Um, interestingly, uh, just brought up a good point in, in the differing life cycles, the offset of the hawks with the hawk hawklets being brought up there while they are much younger than the eagles the older eagles that had um, were looking at the the young hawklet as, as a food source um, in another case where there was a successful hatching and raising or not hatching but a raising and a fledge of a hawk in an eagle nest 
they were much closer in their in their life cycle age. Right. So that's what allowed that to happen. We were kind of hoping there for a while we that really that were. might happen. Could we see some yeah, eagles, that would be the core eagles, raising some some baby hawks um, and to fledge? But uh, that was probably the the, the critical stage reason of development was why just too why it did not work out. Um, we we dodged a bullet, but we also learned some really good stewardship where we had a we had some some fishing line um, and we had some sinkers and a hook come up into the nest and. Um, one of the eaglets, I can't remember which one it was, I'm sure others will remember this, um, got tangled up and almost probably did swallow the line, not probably the, 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 the hook, um, but we did retrieve that. Amy retrieved yeah. that out of the nest. We looked at it. Um, it was non-lead split shot sinkers. Um, they're probably... Uh, um, Let's bismuth, see. I think bismuth. you thought? Yeah, I think they're bismuth is, is one of the, the metals that are used for non-lead shots. So hats off to uh, the fishermen in the area that uh, have made that switch over from lead uh, tackle to uh, non-lead. So good job. John, you should get the little friends to show how oh, we center yeah. the cameras. So, and while John's doing that, I see some of your questions and comments. And when we're done talking here, I'll go ahead and jump on the chat yeah. and answer them or answer them as we talk. So off season, uh, um, used to do a lot of work with Bob, and uh, Bob uh, used to use uh, some some <laughs> some target uh, for I guess these would be targets for focusing cameras yep, yep. and nest boxes and getting here's our peregrine falcon stuffed uh, toy. It's it's a special one. Bob gave this to to my daughter Laura when we were down there in 2015 after the fledge. But uh, um, we've got our peregrine falcon. We've got our turkey vulture. <laughs> hello, hello. We've got our, our eagle. Um, so just uh, uh, a message about uh, the off season is camera prep time. And I'm actually in the process of testing cameras right now, probably possibly deploying uh, two more cameras in the next month. So all the donations uh, um, that you guys donate uh, to the Raptor Resource Project definitely are going. They go to a, a good, good uh, cause, and and um, we did want to talk about just uh, we are surprised by the generosity every once in a while. Um, it's usually not necessarily planned events, but um, folks have left Raptor Resource Project some some pretty significant bequests, and, and that takes some time and some forethought and some just. I don't know, financial stewardship of what, how you want to make a difference. Uh, there's a lot of folks who've watched the Decor Eagles over the years, you know, whether it might be from a hospital bed, whether it might be from an old folks home or with one of their parents or family members or through whatever in a classroom, a teacher, you know, teaching students with them and parents seeing that um, folks, uh, when they look at the possibility to help donate, We've got some significant bequests over the last couple of years, and um, we're so thankful for that when it happens. We've got about a $300,000 a year budget, a little bit over that, and we get some great financial support from uh, Explore, Annenberg, and, and some others. Um, uh, but most of it is just donations uh, from you know viewers like you. So we really, really appreciate. We really it. appreciate that, and. Uh, um, so give what you can, and we really appreciate it. Um, and if you want to uh, plan ahead and make a big difference uh, and give some kind of legacy giving, um, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. And, and really, I want to just say how thankful we are for that. Uh, um, some and on our, the topic of legacy, I think we should also bring up Bremer Bird Fan. You guys definitely, you know, obviously yep. remember Bremer. It was yep. um, a shock and a very sad Sad thing for all of us. So, right. you know, we talked about the year of wonderment. That was a phrase of, of Bremer, and and really, it was a year of wonderment at the North Nest. Yes, yes. Um, we we miss her already, and it'll be a different year without her on moderation. But uh, again, uh, um, that brings up the whole issue of thanking uh, the time and and treasure of your own valuable time that our our volunteers give to. Raptor Resource Project, and I guess you're you're uh, you're helping them to help. 
um, yeah. when you help us with our program. So, um, uh, no, the, the Eagle family is like any other family, we, but we're, we're here and we're stronger together. I mean, I, got, I know that's a cliche now, but it's true. We've got some testimonials that we've got as we're working on our newsletter here, which should be out in a, in a week or so, um, along with the calendars. But, uh, and I can attest to this, being a former cam operator coming up the ranks, um, just seeing those shots, zooming in, seeing that the broadcast is actually going and you've got an <laughs> internet connection <laughs> and uh, that thousands of people are getting to see you know, what you are uh, curating for them. You're basically an armchair cinematographer, um, our cam operators and our moderators, and just the joy that it brings them to experience it themselves and then know that they're sharing it with all of you. Um, that, that's something that I think all, our volunteers, uh, that's, that's what drives them to, uh, to want to volunteer and to do that work. So 100%. Uh, and I see everybody making comments. So <laughs> thank yeah, you again so, for being here. If you guys have questions for us, um, if I see them come up in the comments, I'll answer them now or I'll just hop on the chat when we're done. Yeah. So um, again, thanks to the landowners. Um, thanks to our volunteers, uh, moderators, cam operators, watchers. You know, we learn a lot from just uh, the, the chats and everything from you folks that are watching and helping us document what's going on here. We get some great science, uh, um, you know, Sherry in the past, uh, especially at this nest and, and Smitha and others uh, helping document what we are seeing here and the actual science of, you know, targeting and, and uh, uh, recording all of the meals and whether it's a uh, mammal or, or, or fish species or other. <laughs> other. I got to um, break in here real quick. River Eagle, thank you. I, I saw what you said, so just thank you. And to the rest of the moderating team, too. Yes. I'll second that. 